All right, so here I sit on a Sunday afternoon after the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. I really question whether I should even react to this, talk about it, but I feel led to just for mental health sake. I think our country needs a mental health check, and I am tired of seeing people justify their words and uh, cheer on actions to try to literally take the lives of other people. It just can't happen anymore. And as a mental health professional, you can have any opinion you want. You can believe somebody's crazy. You can believe somebody's a terrible potential candidate for some spot. You can believe somebody doesn't belong. But to cheer on or to be sad that they didn't get eliminated or to cheer on that someone actually tried to take them out is a completely wrong thing as a mental health professional. So I'm going to look at this video today that captures some of the events from the rally in Pennsylvania yesterday and see what we think about it. Without further ado, all right, this is CNN capturing the events from the Trump rally yesterday. Thanks, it is about 9.30 uh, p.m. here on the East Coast. This occurred around 6.15 uh, p.m. in Butler, Pennsylvania. Um, if you're just joining us, I'm gonna be playing um, the what the former president, uh, how this began, the former president making remarks shortly into uh, the beginning of this, uh, this campaign appearance. Let's watch. No, that's a little... Well, I was at uh, dinner while this happened. I didn't bring my phone to dinner. I try not to bring my phone when we're eating, but I literally left it at home, so I didn't know. And then my wife had her phone and she showed it to me. And my son, Tony, had sent a text of what, just a picture, a snapshot of, of what had happened to Donald Trump. And I was like, this can't be real. Like, what in the world? Did somebody like jump on the stage and try to punch him? And uh, that's why there's blood. I don't know what happened. And then it all just unfolded when I got home. But this just brings back, there's so much PTSD going on here, y'all. It's PTSD from people who've been in the stands. And y'all may take it lightly, but it is not to be taken lightly. PTSD is real. And you can go with nightmares. You can go with traumas of feeling like you might be too smothered or suffocated or trapped somewhere after this. If you don't deal with it and see a professional, it could be really bad. And especially the people that were right up there around it when it was all happening because they were right in the middle of it. And you got, I just I feel it just re-watching this, the moments of when I saw it for the first time. This, uh, this campaign appearance, let's watch. Oh, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Oh man, you hear the popping and that had to be unreal because just this doesn't happen. Like it hasn't happened in so long and you start hearing this popping, which doesn't come from inside of this place. It comes from outside. Obviously we found out from a building nearby where the shooter was and then the secret service took him out after that. That's where all the extra popping was coming from. And I think what ended up happening, I can't point to this, but on the bottom left of the screen, or the left side of the screen, I think is where all of the firing was coming towards Trump. And I think it got somebody down on the, the kind of right side of this screen behind him, went right past him through his ear. And then multiple shots, three shots, at least from the shooter, went and got other people, killed one guy instantly and injured two other men on top of that that are, are critical, uh, but stable at this point. And boy, Secret Service jumps on him. It's, it's so amazing to me how people have instant uh, backseat driver, you know, hindsight 2020 kind of vision where they got the exact right thing to do. This is a spur of the moment. This They train for this all the time. They know what they're doing. 
but it's amazing how people judge this. I, I personally, looking at this, am a little surprised this could happen, honestly, with the state of security that we have in today's world, especially for presidential candidates. But you heard them say Hawkeyes here, which is the, you know, the ultra protection. Those are the military guys coming up with their big rifles and they are protecting them. So they're protecting the president and then Hawkeye, that crew is protecting them and looking out. And then they said shooters down, which means they know the shooter's been neutralized at this point. Ah, you hear people screaming, probably from the person that was shot and killed. Let me get my shoes. Let me get my shoes. Got, got you, sir. I got you, sir. Let me get my shoes, sir. Hold that in your head. Bloody. So we got to move to the bus. You know, I've heard people talk about this potentially being staged or something. I, I just can't believe. Like, the way he looks, he looks stunned, he looks shocked, and he looks scared to me. And I think his, you know, fight or flight response that he has when we have trauma is fight or flight. Like, which, get me out of here or I'm gonna attack his fight. And that's just his personality. And I think that's where, you know, he wanted to get his shoes on. He's kind of disoriented. I don't know where I'm, I'm just gonna get my shoes on. And they are all huddling around him to protect him and to shield him at this point. But he looks like this, and of course, recognize the guy's almost 80 years old and they went on top of him. I can imagine it's like a football tackle with everybody getting on top of him to shield him so he couldn't be hit. So he's got to be a little battered and bruised with that. Let me get my shoes. Sir. Hold that in your head. It's bloody. So we got to move to the bus. Let me get my shoes. Okay. Let's Let's go. Watch out. And they bring him to the car. Seen in primetime anchors, Caitlin Collins and Abby Phillip are, are here with me. Um, Caitlin, I know you've been talking to, to sources. Now, there's all kinds of opinions on what he's doing there, whether he's grandstanding or whether he's trying to publicize, politicize, publicize. I don't know. He's a marketing strategy there to pump up the crowd. I think honestly, he's saying, I'm, I'm your leader and I'm gonna, this is, these are his people. I'm your leader and I'm getting, I'm giving up. We gotta fight, we gotta hang in there. Don't let anybody take away your freedoms and don't let this scare you. And I think that's what a leader does. I mean, like him or not, he's a guy that's not gonna back down and he's gonna hang in there until the very last second. But this has gotta scare people to death that he is, um, they, they try to take him out. I mean, the fact that I'm sitting in here on a Sunday, I haven't shaved, I've been hanging out, and I thought, should I even talk about this? I want to talk about this because I want people to understand that real mental health means you can not like things or people, you can, you can even hate things or people, but there's no reason to take anybody else's life in your hands, and there's also no reason to cheer someone getting taken out. There's no reason to uh, be sad that someone missed trying to assassinate a former president. There's nothing okay with this. That's not normal. And anybody who talks about that, you're not thinking normally. You're in an alternate reality because these are people's mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and sons and daughters. These are real people out there, even the people protecting him. And they protect the president with their life. They will take the bullet for the president because they believe that much. And from what I've heard, even Secret Service, it doesn't even mean they always believe in them politically. They're, that's their job is to protect this person. That's what they do. But boy, they got a machine here when they get in this car. Or here with me. Um, Caitlin, I know you've been talking to, to sources. What's the latest you're, you're hearing? Um, the entire campaign apparatus is just deeply rattled. A, a lot of people have not been able to have a chance to speak with the former president directly. Mm -hmm. A few of them have. Obviously, we heard from him himself, but even his children just uh, had a few brief moments uh, on the phone with them. We've heard from, from most of them. 
so far, all obviously still processing this. I mean, obviously, every president is hyper aware of their security and their surroundings ever since what happened to, to, to President Reagan and also JFK. Donald Trump himself is also one of those. I mean, I, I've been to dozens of these rallies. Mm -hmm. This is outside, obviously, so the security parameter is different. But you go through Secret Service security to go into any rally like this. You go through mm -hmm. a magnetometer. You have that instance. I should note what I'm hearing from a lot of them is questions about the security here and what happened mm -hmm. and how something like this could happen, because it does seem unthinkable, uh, I think. And the House Oversight Chair, James Comer, just put out a statement saying that he has reached out to the Secret Service Director. He's requesting briefings. We are going to see. That's a really big question here. And I think we all need to come together. It's time to stop. It's time to stop dividing one side against the other and saying, we win, we take you out. You win, you take us out. And we're, we're bent on destroying each other instead of letting people's voice and vote count in this country because our country looks weak, it looks tattered, it looks broken apart when this kind of stuff happens. And we need to show unity. We need to come together somehow. And I don't mean agree. I mean, understand that it's okay to have different viewpoints and you don't have to tear each other apart. We can talk about what we believe and what we want for the country without trying to say, therefore, we need to take somebody else out. It just shouldn't happen on either side of the coin. But this is my biggest thing there, too, because I heard something today that uh, is how the security happened. There is a lapse somewhere that a line of sight person could get to a point where they could actually take a shot without the Secret Service knowing it's there. Either it was in the setup of things or it was during the day of. But the fact that this guy was a shooter, who apparently was a 20-year-old person from that local area, could get up there, crawl up there with a rifle and find a position and take the shots. Here's the difference, though, of what I heard today. I heard, I don't know how much truth there is in this, but I heard that there was a police officer that was patrolling that people saw this guy crawling up on the roof with a shotgun and yelled at the police officer and he crawled up onto the roof behind this the shooter and confronted him and the shooter turned around and pointed the gun at the officer and the officer retreated because because he thought he was about to get shot so he retreated back then the shooter turned around and that's when he shot at the president now that's huge news that i think just came out but that is huge if that's actually what's happened because that means they did get up there and they saw him and they they had him there he turned around he was about to probably take that officer out and it all just unfolded the way it did but to begin with how did he even get to crawl up on that roof at all there had to be some type of lapse in security this does not happen accidentally the secret service are too detailed they are too specific with how they do this they do it days in advance they, are, they know this area, like they've run through it with a fine tooth comb. They know everything about it. There is something that happened here that wasn't right. And I don't mean so much up where the president was as in the perimeter on the outside where people need to be watching. Action on Capitol Hill as a result of this, even though we are very much still learning so much of this. Uh, but I also spoke with people who were there. I, I'm not going to say the name of one of the people I was on the phone with just because they had to get off very quickly. So I don't uh, want to disclose their identity, but they were right up there near the front uh, when this happened. And they said you could see Trump react as, as obviously, as he says now, it was a bullet that grazed his ear. And you can hear the panic in his voice in those first few moments in yeah. the audio where he's saying, let me get my shoes, mm -hmm. let me get my shoes. And then he's whisked off stage. He pumped his fist, as you can see here in this photo right now. I was told this that trauma. as he was taken down into the motorcade before he was taken to the hospital there in Butler, Pennsylvania, he, he kind of pumped his fist again and had this defiant kind of stance, you know, reacting in the moment to, to what happened. Yeah, I don't think it's a defiant kind of stance is what that is. I think that's a do not let this scare you. Do not let this change your mind. Do not let this make you turn away. I am your leader. I am here to stand in front of you. Whether you like it or not, either side does this. I would say the same thing that I, I don't think he is acting in defiance. I think he's reacting again, like I said, with mental health. The fight or flight reaction is what happens when trauma kicks into gear. And his is definitely not flight. It is a fight. And it's, I'm going to stand up. And that's, I don't think that's defiance. I think that's, I'm here. I'm not backing down. I am still here in front of you. I am your leader. And he's talking to his people. 
defiant kind of stance, you know, reacting in the moment to, to what happened. He has left the hospital, but a lot of people obviously are, are still just trying to get in touch with him and to, to talk to him in the aftermath of this. Yeah, I mean, it is inconceivable that something like this could have happened. Mm. I mean, I've covered President Obama, President Trump, mm. uh, candidates, even at outdoor rallies. In fact, especially at outdoor rallies, the kind of security that they would have, the perimeter, not just where people are going, but all the buildings surrounding it, um, there's a reason that th that whole apparatus is supposed to extend even beyond mm -hmm. just the the rally mm -hmm. itself. And it's because of this country's long, dark history with exactly this scenario. Right. I mean, uh, they have uh, counter snipers who are with binoculars scanning, scanning build, all buildings over. all so over. Usually uh, on top of Typically those drones, very buildings. Too. And so, I mean, th this is not, unfortunately, as, as Tim said, not a new scenario for this country. In fact, it is a scenario that's played out too many times in this country, and the Secret Service is deeply aware of that. Uh, every single time mm -hmm. that a protectee is, uh, comes even close to an incident like this, it's something that sets off uh, an incredible amount of soul searching within the organization, and I'm sure this mm -hmm. one will too. But for the country tonight, I, you know, I think so many people on it doesn't matter where you are in the political spectrum. I'm hearing from them, obviously, tonight. People are stunned and they're worried. They are worried about what is going to happen yeah. in this country. We still have some four months before the end of this election. And this is occurring before a major political event. That's the truth. I think one of the things that can help it, and this is a sad part, because these are great rallies to be able to have for anybody in the outdoors. Both parties being able to have outdoor rallies where a bunch of people could, people could come is great. I think it's probably going to change where they do these rallies just because you want to contain it a little more and you want to keep people safe. Like all of these people in this arena here, in this closed space, were safe, except for the outside space. So when you do it in an enclosed arena, you can really control, control everybody that's coming into this arena and what they have on them. You have a much higher confidence rate, but it, it's very unsettling for the country to me. Uh, if we make it okay to do stuff like this, this could happen to anybody. And there's no problem. I wasn't around during kind of civil war movements, but when you look back at the 60s, you look back at times when it was horrible, I can only imagine what it's like for people uh, sitting there in that place, thinking one minute one way, and then all of a sudden your whole mindset changes to safety and survival and how scary that's gotta be. Four months before the end of this election, and this is occurring before a major political event. Uh, there is a lot of fear in the country right now about what this portends and also what it says well, about think, where we are. And you think, I mean, it's, you know, there's Ronald Reagan, but Steve Scalise, uh, Nancy Pelosi, yeah. the man who Gabby came Giffords, to her, her who, house. Uh, who pulled out a statement tonight her husband, as well. Gabby Giffords as well. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we've seen these incidents before, but there's something, Anderson, particular about it happening in the context of a presidential campaign. It's a sign, as President Biden said tonight, of a sickness in the country that mm -hmm. someone thought to take a step to alter or affect the outcome of a presidential election with an act like this. And uh, for the people who are watching tonight, who are wondering mm -hmm. what this means, I mean, they are right to wonder because I think we all have to be prepared mm. uh, for a, a lot of chaos ahead. But I also think it's a moment for the country to decide right now. This is a moment for the leaders. This is a moment for Donald Trump and Joe Biden to step up and say, I'm going to be an example of who we should be from this moment forward. I'm going to be example, be an example of what Standing up for what you believe in without doing it in a violent or a hateful way looks like. This is their moment. This is the time to hit the reset button and say, I am going to do this differently. And it may surprise you that I'm not going to talk with as much hate, that I'm not going to vilify the other person, that I'm not going to uh, try to rile up my troops, so to speak, my followers to be so against the other person but to go for me, I just wish we could get our country to talk about what we want rather than how horrible the other side is because that's just destroyed us. Wow. Uh, what kind of country we live in and whether- This happens in marriage. People ask me like, why are you talking about politics, Tom? 
This can go to families too, marriage. I see couples in my office all the time. They treat each other, they vilify each other this way too. And I'm like, this is exactly why your marriage will implode and destroy and never make it because you are tearing the other person apart. You're not speaking about your hopes, your dreams, your desires, what you've struggled with, what your boundaries are. You're not communicating. You're just spitting venom at the other person. It's not going to help. Or not, this is the kind of thing that is going to really change uh, how we conduct ourselves. I mean, I think it is in, hope, still within in the a power good way. of patriotic citizens in this country to push back against this kind of darkness. Well, and just on the yeah. security That's aspect well of this, there were counter snipers there. You can see them in, a, in videos because there is a building behind. Obviously, this is he, he's in Butler County. This is deep Trump country. But there, there's a building that you can see that was kind of behind where Trump is out on the stage. You can see it in the photos that, that people who were there took in the videos that they took. You see the counter snipers uh, on there. You can see them anytime Trump is somewhere, you you often see them. Uh, I think also the question- Well, anytime any presidential candidate is there, like if Joe Biden was doing a speech, you'd see the counter snipers too. Like they have so much security. They are looking everywhere. And like I said, typically drones and also, but they're on top of buildings, they're looking everywhere. This isn't just a Trump. This is who he brings around with them. In fact, he may have less detail than Joe Biden. I don't know, but- they both deserve as much security and detail as they need to stay protected. I just think in the history of it, many more people are going after Donald Trump to try to take him out than they would be Joe Biden at this point. Uh, on there, you can see them anytime Trump is somewhere, you you often see them. Uh, I think also the question and what we're hearing tonight, you mentioned the Republican convention that is starting in Milwaukee on Monday, mm -hmm. where Trump and many of his surrogates were slated to travel to as soon as tomorrow. Uh, we are told it is still expected to go forward. We'll see if that changes as the as the night progresses and as this investigation is getting underway. But security was already an issue there. The footprint, the, the RNC wanted it to be wider than what it was. I do mm -hmm. think this is only going to make it and the Democratic convention in Chicago and a month from now only even more intense as they're learning more about this. I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, as the story unfolds. Bottom line, I want to be, bring attention to this because I want to be able to use it as a platform for us to put aside the hatefulness, the divisiveness, the, um, the okayness to talk about eliminating people. I uh, want us to be able to talk about what we believe, what we hope for, uh, what we feel is right for our country and not have to talk about how horrible the other side is is and that goes for donald trump as much as it does for joe biden in this case that can we please use this as an opportunity this is your time to be able to step up and be the leader that shows them i'm going to be an example now of how to be and i'm not going to feed that fire anymore leave your comments let me know what you think about this i'd love to hear your comments and remember mental health matters above all especially in a time like this because i love our country um, and i love the uh, land that we have to be able to express free, freely how we feel about everything. And I want to be able to keep that in our country and not have us fighting within each other. We'll see you on the next Reaction Therapy.